over the years I've met a number of fellows who belong to the so-called outlaw clubs. A lot of it uh, seems to be gang mentality. As individuals, the pussy cats, they're fun to be with, they're no trouble. I'm gonna punch them in the fucking face, they're looking at me wrong, you know? You have to be there. You have to be there to get a beating, you know? It, it, it could be anything. It could be as, as much alcohol I had in me, as high as I am, or as stupid as you are. It could go both ways, man. I, one day, may, I might be wrong. When, when you do something wrong, you get to a lot of trouble, and it costs a lot of money, you know, to lawyers and, you know, doctor bills, and you hurt people, and, you know, if you're a real out, outlaw biker club, uh, you do get in trouble because you got to back up your patches. <laughs> I got, I got this, it's got spikes in it. it. Goes under your vest, your shirt, whatever, jacket, I mean, you fight, you know, rips guys' hands up, take people's faces and grind it into there. I got a couple vests, but I only got one here. You know, you're watching outside of a club or something, you gotta wear a vest, always carry a gun, you gotta protect the members. This is more like a strap on vest, stop shotgun and stuff. This fits under your clothes. Let's put it on the. Might stop like a 25, this one. I got another one. The white one stop 45s, 357s. Most guys are carrying 25s. You know, some guys got Tech 9s who are in them. Stuff like that. You got a lot of people who, who you know, stereotype us, you know? From like movies or whatever. We're not like that. We're real fucking people, man. And. And we do real things, you know? So fuck the people who, who, who can't see us as individuals and, and uh, respect us for our ways, you know? For which we got tattoos or we got long hair. Hey, man, I like my long hair. Some brothers like their short hair. We're not made to look like, like everyone else out there dressing with baggy jeans. Or you go off to fucking uh, that Marcus Dairy thing and you'll see the guys with their new leather. You can smell the leather. They're brand new leather. It was brand new. <laughs> You know, everybody with chaps, and they on the weekend they wear a handkerchief around their head. You know what I mean? That's bad. In an event like this, there's people from all walks of life. There's doctors, there's lawyers, there's uh, paramedics, there's outlaws, there's AMA members, there's everybody. You know, and everybody seems to get along fine with each other. And as long as everybody knows each other's rules and respects them. A lot of people that come here do feel like they're, they're part of the outlaw scene. And, uh, in the same token, they're not, though. The people that feel that way don't know about it, and they don't know what's going on with it. Years ago, it used to be the hardcore biker type, and now it's everybody and their mother, yuppies, and whatever. You know, it's a different crowd, totally. I've been doing it for 28 years, so it's... More money is spent by the yuppie type. The outlaw type is more practical. He'll buy a leather because it's going to help him when he goes down, where the other ones will buy a $500 leather because it looks good. They never touched a wrench in their life, so they don't know nothing about Harley. There's going to be a lot of nice Harleys on sale in a couple of years. <laughs> they don't even know what a wrench looks like. One guy asked me where the spark plugs was. That was good. The hardcore bikers, we don't usually uh, have as customers because they usually fix their own bikes. You know, it's usually guys who can't fix their own bikes or who can pay for their own bike to be fixed. So it's like uh, someone who has a good job will come here as a customer, usually, you know. The motorcycle makes guys feel uh, a lot tougher. And, and that's where any, anyone from the street, you know, can uh, jump on a bike and live a little part of that life that these other guys gave their life to be around, you know. They gave up their lives and created the clubs and the whole atmosphere. And now, now everyone can be a piece of that, you know what I mean? Uh, and they don't have to go to jail for it. You know. Weekend warriors, people who just, who, who only on the weekend, they, they're something that they're not during the week, you know? I mean, I mean I, I'm like this all week long, you know? So I'm not acting like something I'm not. 
These people, they only come out on the weekends. They're fakes, you know? We got beef. We got turkey. Come on by and try the jerky. We're not weekend warriors. We all ride when we can, as often as we can. But we all have obligations. We're, you know, we work for somebody or we work for ourselves. Um, so the week gets tied up in uh, work and th those obligations. And then the weekend is the time that you ride. But we're not a weekend warrior. I mean, we're not different people. Just because uh, everyone else is, is, is drinking and getting smashed and shooting up drugs does not mean we have to do it. But it doesn't mean we're going to isolate ourselves from it either, because this is a real world. And God did not put us here to go hide in the corner and say, oh, look at us, we're a Christian Motorcycle Association. No, we're out there to meet them one-on-one, -on -one, wherever they are. Jesus was not a namby-pamby by any means. He was a real man. The common denominator is the road. And, that, and there's no other... There is no other common denominator, because you can find every, every variance that there is among motorcyclists as you would in the general population. But it's the road. We ride to eat, and we eat to ride. <laughs> the closeness of view to nature, to the road, to what it is, is not encumbered by glass and steel. You're not insulated from the wonders of the countryside. And it's uh, almost like flying. I got their key. Growing up, you know, you, 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 you go through changes, you know, one minute you want to be this, next thing you want this, you want to be the president of the United States, you know, so growing up, you know, I had a lot of things in mind, you know, being uh, a lot of different things, you know, but, you know, I couldn't ask for a better way to turn out, you know, at least I'm, I'm free, you know, I do what I want, and I got some good brothers behind me, you know, I mean, you can't ask for nothing better, man.